The Resonant Light Pro Gen 2 is a very powerful device, um, and programming it uh, can be done two ways. One is with the control panel, and another way is with a tool called the Pro Gen Wizard. It's not the easiest tool in the world to use, and that's why this video exists. Um, normally, in the past, we would have used the consolidated annotated frequency list as a source for frequencies. Um, but today we have an option here to use the, the Spooky 2 software, which includes not only the CAFL, but a whole bunch of other more modern databases, all packed into one excellent application. So this uh, video is to discuss how to connect up the ProGen 2 to a computer, including how to program it from frequency sets that come out of the Spooky 2 software. It's a little more powerful and a little more user-friendly than building them from scratch from the CAFL. I hope it helps. All right, so here's the ProGen 2. Let's look at the connectors before we get too far into connecting this thing. This is the power supply input. Um, this is the connector for the Pearl. You do not need the power supply input if you're using the Pearl. The power is supplied by this connector here. You, you probably notice that when you go to use this thing. We're only going to need the power supply connector for programming this thing. Um, there's a connector here that you're not using with the Pearl, and this is for the contacts, for the foot pads, for the, um, for the handles, and this is called the BNC connector and there is also a volume control just for this. It, this volume control has no influence on the connector for the Pearl. And the last uh, very important connector, this is a D-shaped 9-pin connector. It's called a DB9, and this is the serial port. Modern computers don't have a serial port anymore, so we will have to talk about the USB to serial port adapter, which I'll uh, show you and how to connect and get the driver installed and stuff like that. Now, power supply, um, I have one that is already made for you. The specifications on the power supply are 12 volts, 250 milliamps with a center positive. Now, um, I've already built power supply. It's with the case. It has a happy cat on it. It says ProGen. Um, just in case something gets missing or goes lost, you'll notice that uh, on this power supply, it already says right around here, 12 volts, 3 amps. This is a regulated switching mode power supply. It is the, the load at the other end that dictates how much current this supply provides. That's because this is a regulated switching mode power supply with also a center positive. You just can't go willy-nilly grab at anything if it's an unregulated power supply because you will blow the device up. So if you lose it, talk to somebody who knows electronics or hit a hit up a... Uh, well, just beg for somebody who knows electronics or else it will destroy the unit. Now, connecting this thing, as I said, it uses this DB9 connector. Good luck finding one of those these days on a modern computer. Hence the need for one of these things. This is called a uh, USB to serial connector. One end is our old school DB9 connector. Inside of it are specialized electronics. And on the other side of it is our old and trusted USB cable. So we will talk about, uh, I'll have this connected up uh, physically in a few moments. And then we'll talk about the installation of the driver for this thing under Windows so that we can get this bad boy connected up to your computer. Okay, so we've connected up the ProGen 2 to the, um, the USB interface cable. The USB interface cable is not yet connected to the computer. It sometimes is a good idea to install the drivers before connecting these USB style devices, even printers are like this too. So I haven't connected the other end yet. We'll do the drivers in a sec. Um, that's powered on obviously, and this is it sitting around waiting for it to do something. So next let's hop over to the computer and do the drivers. All 
Okay, so now I'm over on a different computer here. This is the computer that's going to be connected. And uh, I've wanted you to see that there are already a bunch of uh, programs and applications and stuff located in the on the D drive and the miscellaneous progen directory. I've got the application, <coughs> this actual program that we're going to be installing in case it's needed. Uh, the consolidated annotated frequency list, PDF, which is downloadable anytime, but it's kind of convenient to have it if we're referring to it. Some old CSV files, which I'm actually not using anymore. Um, the programs that are programmed into the progen, uh, might as well show you those. The stock, these all came before we started playing around with the progen, and then uh, the current ones that we're using in production. And uh, we'll go through the process of using those in a bit. Uh, the prolific driver, which we're about to download, uh, is, is already fetched, but just in case you need it. And the actual URL, which we're going to be going to in a second uh, on the web. And then lastly, when it comes time, we're going to grab a copy of the, um, the tool to actually do the programming. And there's the URL is there as well. But the first thing is we're going to talk about the hardware. The hardware is this um, prolific um, USB to serial, and this is one of many places to buy these things. Um, the prolific is the name of the company that makes the chip inside of it, and we will need a driver for that. And the one that I'm currently using seems to be very popular is the PL2303. If you ever lose it, you're going to need to purchase one. They're not that expensive if you know where to look. They're very expensive if you don't know where to look. So just be cautious of the price. So yeah, um, the prolific website is where uh, you would search for and find the driver for this thing. Let's, let's download it. I'm going to click that button. And uh, just for the fun of it, I have already created some directories here on the desktop prolific driver and we're going to download that driver I've already downloaded it once here from an uh, earlier video attempt and once that driver is finished I'm going to go to that directory and then right click on it and choose 7-zip and extract it to that location and now there is a main executable here and a, a tool for checking the version of chip, which I don't use too much, and a little bit of a manual. Let's double click on the installer and cross our fingers that things go well. It's not connected yet, remember, I haven't plugged it in. So the computer I can hear the computer speeding up a little bit. It's doing some work. And no mention of it being done. Here we go. It's finished. So I'm going to click that button. And you will see the prolific driver um, in the add remove programs area. Which one? This one here. The PL2303 USB to serial. Just installed right now. If ever you need to uninstall it, you can go there. And I'm just going to plug the USB cable in. And let's keep an eye over here for any kind of uh, activity and automatic driver installation. Just a sec. Okay, it's in. And if all goes well, sometimes it doesn't, this should automatically find the driver. It is Windows, so we have to cross many fingers and toes. To do still going. Always during demos. There. Great. First time. And um, you'll see that it's using COM5. That's going to come, uh, that COM number, communication port number 5. That, for us, that's going to be very important. Um, I'll show you why. Another place to go, if you notice, I right-clicked on my, my computer icon and went to Manage. 
there's a place called the device manager, which is sometimes necessary to become familiar with. Boy, it sure is slow. Okay, uh, device manager. And then down here under uh, ports, COM, and LPT, we'll see the prolific USB, again, attached to COM5. You'll probably notice that if you disconnect and reconnect this device, reboot the computer, sometimes this COM port moves around. And unfortunately, that's, that's just the way it is with, with these sort of devices. But let's just finish up with this chapter. We've actually installed the driver. The dri driver is communicating. Uh, we are attached to a particular COM port. Now we're going to move on to the ProGen Wizard. Okay, so the ProGen Wizard is next in line. Um, this particular tool, um, I, as of recently, I haven't been able to find the tool listed on the uh, Resonant Lights website. Maybe it's around there somewhere. You can use the search button. I just simply uh, manually type this URL, uh, the download page, and uh, I can download the, the uh, ProGen wizard tool hopefully still here this is the pgw progen wizard for pc they do have an osx version i've noticed and i've never actually used that um let me download this and we'll talk about why not uh progen wizard i'll put it here the reason why i'm not recommending we go with the progen wizard for osx although it will help you program it we're remember we're going to be utilizing the use of uh, the Spooky2 software as a foundation for building our frequency sets, and uh, the Spooky is only available for Mac. Oh, sorry, for uh, for Windows. So to do everything on one Windows machine would be wiser, just for simplicity. So let's get back on track here. We've got the ProGen Wizard, and I'm going to simply go to Extract. And if I remember correctly, the Progen Wizard just simply runs out of its own directory. It's been a while since I've actually installed it. Um, it does ask you if you want to register. Uh, you don't have to. Um, I did once, and um, it's not necessary to use the software. It just will bypass this every time. Uh, I just continue to say I'll register later. So as you can see, we didn't have to install anything. We just simply ran. Uh, out of that uh, directory and it's version 343. I'm going to close it out and show you that I've already got uh, a link to the most current version of this software right up here, the ProGen Wizard. And it's already, it should still be located. Let's make sure it still runs. Run. So after I clean up this computer, these directories are going to be gone. And this will still run. It's just in a different location. It's a little cleaner looking. I'll register later. So here we are in the same version of uh, the um, the Progen Wizard is running the same version that we just downloaded. It hasn't been updated for a while. And um, let's just connect it. Before we do anything else, let's just connect it. Make sure the serial port is, uh, is talking. I'm going to go to set serial port here. And um, you can't really see this for some reason. It's a little shrunk, but uh, that is this old application. It does say serial port COM5 connected. And that's great. That's all we have to do. Uh, it seems to automatically find the COM port um, when it starts. Um, but if, if it ever it's necessary, you might have to come here and force it. But I've never seen it uh, be required to do that. So the, the wizard is actually connected. And uh, we're pretty close. We're getting ready to finally use the wizard for the first time. I'm going to click cancel there. But before we do that, let's uh, get the last piece of the puzzle here, which is the spooky software. All right, the last piece of the puzzle is the spooky software. 
And um, if you go to the spooky download page, you'll see it's a very long list of things. It's quite a full package of software these guys are putting together. If you carefully go down to full package software, April 1st, look around for something. This is obviously going to be outdated if ever you see this. Um, but I'm going for the full installer. So it uh, contains the full database, drivers, and everything else you'll need. So I'm going to click full installer. And just for cleanliness for now, I'll put it in the Spooky2 directory. It's a fairly big file, but I'm getting good bandwidth. Um, you do not need, again, you do not need the spooky hardware to use the software. And that's great because this software is an excellent repository uh, source for the, um, the frequency sets that we're going to be building and ultimately putting onto the, bro uh, the progen. Now, still waiting for this download the complete definitely slow download today I'll come back to this when it's ready to install okay so the software is now downloaded I'm going to decompress it I know it looks a little confusing this does have a exe.zip extension which is very confusing for people who don't uh, see the last of three letters that's Microsoft's uh, fun. Oh, by the way, I noticed OS X. Don't get confused by the visibility of this OS X file here. I'll explain that in a sec. Let me just start this installer. This doesn't mean it's OS X software. It means that the person who wrote this, and I know who he is, uh, Mr. White, he, he transferred this uh, installer from a Mac in some way. And these are... Uh, very often a, an indication of files being written to um, Microsoft file systems or uh, it, it happens. You see these, they used to be called dot files or underscore files or something like that. Uh, it, it's just like breadcrumbs left behind using a Macintosh. But don't get confused by this. It, this is definitely not Macintosh software. It was just sort of built on or used by or transferred around using a Mac. All right, so I am just having a look here. What's going on? Because I was blabbing away, I didn't pay attention to uh, the installation. Uh, it's very tiny looking. I think it's just because of how I'm doing this over TeamViewer, but uh, hopefully you can see I'm going to select English. And there is the brand new Spooky 2 uh, generator X I'm going to say next to this first screen and I read that and then it's gonna land in the spooky 2 directory and we'll wait for this install no point hanging around I will uh, come back when this is done okay so it looks like Spooky is um, is done and installed. Uh, I'll finish up this part of the video just by launching the Spooky software and showing you what that might look like. Oh yes, the first time looks like it's going to do an update of the databases. I don't believe I've ever installed Spooky 2 on this computer. So this will be a good example of how long it might take on a on an older, slower uh, computer, still good enough for running Spooky. Um, what is this, a Core 2 Duo? That eh, just might be entertaining to see this. If I can see it, um, yeah, a Core 2 Duo. 2 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM on a 64-bit uh, computer under Windows 7. So there's a good example. 
I have Spooky 2 running on even slower computer on a, an IBM T42, which is a 32-bit machine, and it's it's fine. It's not a gaming machine, but it's it's all you need for this kind of thing. So if you saw the Spooky 2 uh, did a little bit more database work, and then uh, it's trying to find a generator, which doesn't exist. I'm not going to be connecting a generator to this computer. So I do not need to exit and install drivers. So I say no. And more database opening. This goes on for a, a little bit. We're pretty close though. It won't be this long to open every time. Okay, I think we're getting close. It just finished doing a bunch of database opening and yay, it is ready to roll. So we've connected all three pieces of software together. And now we're ready to start creating some sets and programming the progen. That'll be in the next chapter. Now before we start programming the progen, we do need to be uh, familiar with uh, the previous programs and the prerequisites for um, some of those wave types and timings and stuff like that. So I have been, uh, over time, saving the programs that have been, uh, that came with the machine as well as have been uh, programmed onto the machine. So if you notice, uh, miscellaneous progen, progen programs in stock, these are the banks, these are programs that came with the, the device originally. Uh, uh, there's probably, I don't know why there's only 40 here, or 25 here. But uh, maybe some of them were blank when I first got the device. Either way, I haven't been using those ever since. Um, I have been programming the machine, and I have uh, come up with different routines for uh, writing programs. It seems, let's say, um, what I've done lately is I, I simply copy over what's what's being what's currently on the device. I have, I should say, what I, I've made. I made all these programs and um, based originally on trying to replicate the BioRay device uh, and using the criteria from the BioRay. And we've had some excellent results. Um, let's say uh, that uh, everything was done and, and a new reference, a new, uh, new program was being requested. I would simply uh, copy all these over to a, to a new date and then... Uh, maybe put all of the originals in this direction and then any changes or adjustments or new ones would be put into here and name them and you'll have to delete some obviously because there is a limit to the number of uh, programs that the device has. The progen will only take 40 and each program can only be 50 levels so those limits are have to be considered uh, for the larger ones. Um, okay, so now now that we have an idea of uh, the limits on it, we do have to talk about um, the limits in terms of, or the specifications in terms of, um, oh, but not yet. We have to talk about this chart first. Uh, you've seen me make this before. Uh, this is the, uh, the, ch the reference point for which program to pick when you're actually running the device. And uh, it doesn't matter which of the 40 banks uh, the the programs are, but if it's helpful if they're in alphabetical order and the names are obviously from the file names that are created, and um, it's difficult to know how long it's going to run because of the way the the progen doesn't show you the total amount of time. It just shows you how many how many more minutes per level, I believe. So uh, it's nice to have this as a reference point, and then obviously the number of levels. Some of these things have a crazy number of levels, and uh, it's a nice to have a reference point. So if you make any changes to the programming, obviously come in here and, and uh, adjust the timestamp and do whatever you have to do to make the, the new uh, program uh, persistent so you know what you're looking at. Now, um, 
the manuals for the Perl and ProGem are, are in the miscellaneous application manual directory here. And I'm, I'm looking at a very important part of it. I have to go back up to what they're recommending is a the use of a wave packet. There are many different types of uh, uh, frequencies that you can apply. You want uh, some frequencies are uh, considered to be um, single frequencies where you just come in and hit one frequency and then you walk away. What they recommend, um, the company that makes this thing, RLTI, they recommend the use of spread contracting wave packets. And what that means is um, they do not just hit the one frequency you're interested. Let's say in this example, 100 hertz. You would hit 100 hertz plus or minus 4 hertz, kind of like circling around the main frequency. And in this example, uh, there's a 100 hertz frequency, a width of 4 hertz, and each frequency is hit for 30 seconds. So what this means is, It'll be 100 plus or minus 4, and then, uh, and then plus or minus 3, 2, and 1, all the way down to 100. It's like this, 96, 104, 97, 103, 98, da-da-da-da-da. You see the pattern there. Um, this will add amount of, a, a significant amount of time to the total treatment, but it has a good chance of hitting any kind of derivations in the pathogen that you're trying to address. Sometimes they do move around in terms of uh, the, the optimal frequency for uh, for treatment. So since spread contracting is their recommendation, that's probably a really good idea to stick with. The last very important consideration is the, um, the number of seconds per level of each frequency. How do we say that? If you have 20 to 50 levels in your treatment, they're recommending to use 10 seconds for each frequency. And this is something that um, was not in the consideration for the BioRay machine. And we have been following the BioRay protocols pretty closely. So um, you'll probably see that some of the original frequency sets could be adjusted. Uh, we've had excellent results. It's not completely necessary for this. Um, the reason that uh, we haven't been doing that is because when you adjust, we'll see this in a second, we'll actually throw an example. If you have 10 seconds for each frequency, you won't be able to do 50 levels worth of a nine um, uh, spread contracting amount. You'll see that the, 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 the person will be sitting there for essentially for two hours or four hours or some really long amount of time. It's kind of confusing. Let's go through an example and I'll show you what I mean. If I go up to the spooky software, again, we're using the spooky software as a reference point for our frequency sets. Um, I'm in the programs. The databases that can be picked are all here. If you do a mouse over these various databases, you'll see where they came from and their history. So not just the CAFL, which is the common go-to, but there's all kinds of great information here. Uh, we're not going to pick uh, molecular weights because they have an M character in front and it'll, it'll just make a mess of what we're trying to do here. I'm going to do WART hit enter and then come down here and look for you'll see here here's a hold the Clark range we can't use those just the way this dash character is equal characters so don't bother picking those They'll, they will not work but this is a standard uh, comma separated you see the way they're set these frequencies are separated by commas it's a comma separated information or file I'm gonna hit that one double click on that one I'm going to double click that, and that, and that, and that. Is that enough? Great. Now, if I hit this one button, it says combine the loaded programs as a single custom program. Done. I'm going to come over here. Whoops. Right click. Copy. And now it's in the clipboard. We're going to come over here to the consolidator.
the consolidator generally will honor the settings um, that we have set up in preferences. It's not always the case. I've already set up the spread contracting default here with a width of 9 and 10 seconds for the wave packet time. Let's make sure it holds. I'm going to go to the consolidator and new. It looks like it minimized on me. There we go. I'm going to hit, I'm pasting control V, all of those frequencies I put in there. I'm going to remove duplicates. I'm going to sort increasing and then compose protocol. Unfortunately, it looks like it did not honor the setting that I asked for in the defaults. That's just the way this program is sometimes. I'm going to hit spread contracting nine frequencies or nine, a width of nine with 10 seconds each. Okay, I'm going to hit default all and we're going to get an idea of how long this might take. One hour and 50 minutes to do 35 levels. So a width of nine. 10 seconds each, that's 19 frequencies per level, a total time of an hour and 50 minutes. That's pretty good, but in some situations you might actually want more time per frequency. If we had more time for frequency and I changed, that didn't change the width, that would increase the total amount of time. Let's look what that looks like. I haven't saved this thing yet, so we can, we can do this again. I'm going to go don't save start again. New, paste in my frequency set, remove, sort, compose. Again I have to pick spread, but this time I'm going to pick let's say 30 seconds. Whoops, 30 seconds. If I didn't change anything the amount of time would be crazy, guaranteed. But I am going to pick, let's say, Actually, let's, just for fun, I'm going to change nothing so you can get an idea of how long it's going to be. I'm going to hit default all. Look at that. 5 hours, 32 minutes. There's no way someone's going to sit that long. I'm going to hit that, get rid of it. Let's start another one. New, paste, remove, sort, compose, single, let's see. 30 seconds again but not so many no, not so much of a width let's say 5 default all that's kind of reasonable but still a little long I'm gonna go for a width of 3 quit consolidator new paste remove sort compose um, spread 30 and 3. Seems like a lot of work, but it works. Now I've got an hour, I've got a total two hour treatment time, which is great. The width is not so high, but I have a really good long exposure time for each frequency. That's kind of nice. So I'm going to stick, stick with that and I'm going to put, whoops, going to put the protocol name here, which is wart. And lastly, go to save it. Let's save it on the desktop. Let's say that I wanted to quit the consolidator and come back to seeing that same frequency later on. We haven't stored it on the progen yet. This is just simply sitting on the desktop. And that's our first homemade frequency set, totaling two hours a time. How many levels was it again? 35 different levels, a width of 3, 30 seconds each. So you get an idea of, vague idea of how to build our very first frequency set. Okay, now let's, let's get serious here. Let's do another one. Uh, let's take this for example. And uh, there's only one entrance in this whole thing. I'm surprised the word shows up, but hey. Now, um, there's only one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frequencies 
in this flatulent uh, CAFL. And if you recall, um, if you have 1 to 10, you might as well use 30 seconds for each frequency, which makes sense. So let's try that out. We're going to come over here. Uh, where am I? Lost myself there. Let's grab. Let's do the save. Our frequencies wind up there. Let's copy that out. And let's make a frequency set. I'm going to paste with control V. I could label it here, by the way. You don't have to. I doubt there's any duplicates. Um, I sort it by increasing and then compose the protocol. Um, we'll call it <laughs> that and we're going to do spread 9. 10 is probably not very much time. Uh, the recommendation was, was it 30 seconds? I forgot. Let's go back to that. It's yeah 30 seconds for each frequency so I'm gonna hit default all and look an hour that's that's pretty good um, as you can see if if it would be <coughs> excuse me a little bit less time a lot less time if we were to use uh, 10 seconds per frequency so as you can see the we've got different situations for uh, the use of uh, the how wide the frequency set is and the make the length of time and, and its impact on the total amount of time. Let's save that preset <laughs> and quit the consolidator. And then let's uh, do a an actual read of the data from the progen and um, do a write to the progen next. Okay, so let's try to do our first read from the progen. <clears throat> I'm going to come up here for this for the progen button and read the progen. And it says here, position the mouse over the read button, this read button here. Press 5, then 2 on the progen to select the transfer of a single bank. And then enter the bank number to transfer the pound to start the transfer and then hit read. So five, two, bank number, pound, uh, and then read. It's kind of fun, but let's do it. Hopefully I can show you that with this thing. I'm gonna have to do two things here. I just let me get it ready. Oh no, no, no. How could I do this? That's going to work. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm hitting five, selecting one bank, then the bank number. Let's just hit uh, bank five, just for the heck of it. Zero five. I have to hit, and then what was the next one? Pound to start the transfer. So I'm going to hit the pound key, and now it's sending, but it's not sending until I hit read gonna hit read and there I have read what is what was on the progen in preset number five bank number five which happens to be something I pre-programmed a long time ago a total of 81 frequencies yada 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 that's what's on the machine 27 27 levels let's uh, let's do that again because it's a little it's a little fun to read I have to, how do I do this again? I'm going to quit the, no, I just hit this button. I do not want to save it. Let's do it again. I'm going to go read progen. And again, it's five, two, bank number, pound, read. Let's try it. There's the unit, five, one bank. Let's try 06, the bank number, the pound key, and then come back over to the computer and hit read. And we've just read bank six, that, that which just happens to be two hours long. 
Okay, so that's how we read anything from the progen. Um, in some situations, you might want to do this because you just need to know the total number of amount of time. They might not have made notes of that. Or um, uh, <coughs> the total number of levels, which is right here, 46 levels long. So that's pretty cool. Now let's actually take one of our programs and then write it out to the progen. We'll do that in the next chapter. Okay, so let's take these two uh, programs that we've written and write them out to the device. Let's first read the five and six and then overwrite five and six with these two guys. So again, let's do this over. We're gonna do uh, five, two, bank number zero five, pound, and read. And then we save this. I'm going to call it, we can just leave it like that without touching it, bank 5. Sweet. Let's do the same thing with bank 6. Reprogen. Come back over to here. 5, 2, 0, Six pound do 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 read file. We're saving this bank six and it's done. So now, now that we've saved them basically, we're going to write these the wart and this other one to the device. So we're doing the opposite. We're now going to push a file to the device. So we go progen load from file. So first we have to pick the file. It's on the desktop, 05, and the bank to put it in. We are putting it in 05. Click here to commence loading. And it says it's ready to load. Immediately after clicking OK, press 5 and 3 on the progen. So let's get over to the progen and I'm hitting 5 and 3. And ta -da, no errors. Let's do it again with the other preset. Yep, that's looking good. Let's load from file. Choose file. 0, 6, 0, 6, click here to commence loading, hit OK, immediately go, what was it again, 5, 3. Sometimes this bombs out with an error, this one worked. Sometimes the application bombs out with some kind of a can't do it kind of an error, but it immediately works upon the second use of that device. I've seen that a couple of times, maybe 10% maybe of the time it stops working because there's a lot going on with this USB driver and funny cable and stuff. So how do you know if it worked? You don't really know until you try to read it. That way you're we're familiar with, let's say the, the 06, which we just made. Let's try it out. We're gonna load. Uh, we're going to read the progen. We're going to do a, a 06 read. So uh, it's 5206 pound. Come back over to the computer and hit read. And yeah, that's the one we just made a little while ago the flatulence protocol. So that's how you read and write to the progen, kind of simple. You just have to now spend some time paying attention to and keeping track of all of the different uh, f of the 40 presets in there and be logical about your flow. If you're going to add one, something's going to have to be taken away because it is saturated right now. And just make sure you're st sticking with your documentation and being clear which presets are in the device 
and with good and accurate notes, uh, you won't be making any mistakes. So as you can see, the ProGen 2 is a pretty powerful device, especially when programmed with the ProGen Wizard. Um, and using the Spooky 2, you can not only include the consolidated, consolidated annotated frequencies, but other frequencies that are uh, modern and are always being updated. By the way, the Spooky software is, seems to be updated at least once a month or every couple of months, um, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to update it. Uh, if necessary, for for uh, more modern inclusions of uh, frequencies that might be discovered over time, and use those frequency sets to build stuff for the progen. If there are any questions that weren't answered in this video, this um, manual is available in this path on the computer or downloadable in both uh, HTML and uh, PDF formats. I've really covered everything that I've needed so far for the use of this particular device, but uh, if, there are, if there are any other further questions, they sh will hopefully be included in this manual. I hope this helps.